Why do you want to drop your perfume if you play Perfuma in Tarot? If you want to find out, then stick around. As of the release of this video, Tarot has been out for around 4 months or just over 4 months, and it has maintained its popularity compared to the other game modes for Identity 5 that are not the main game modes, such as Phantom Shadows and Blackjack. This is due to Tarot's simple game mechanics and different team compositions that you can play and the fact that it is very similar to Quick Match and also Ranked Match meaning that anyone who is good at the normal game mode is going to most probably be very good at the tarot mode as well. Like any game mode, there are some strategies that can improve your chances at winning, and that's what we're going to talk about today. So let's begin. At the beginning of a match, each team will spawn on certain parts of the map, and the knights or hunters from, um, from each team will also spawn together somewhere else on the map. One thing that can really give one team an advantage over the other is if their knight from their team manages to find the enemy's king before the other knight manages to find their target. So helping your knight find out where the king is is very important, and should definitely be a priority at the beginning of a match. You can improve the speed that your knight will find their target by saving up 500 coins at the beginning of a match. By collecting 500 coins, you can then buy the raven that costs 200 coins and send 300 coins to your knight. This will permit them to buy the, the item that lets them see where their target is, their, the king that they are searching for. What is the fastest way to get coins at the beginning of a match? That is to decode. Usually you'll spawn next to a cipher when you spawn into the match, so make sure that you decode and get to those 500 coins as fast as you can. If you spawn into the match and you're the king, what should you do? Now, if you know the location of a nearby chest, I recommend that either you or one of your squires go and open that chest to get the item for you. As soon as you do this, I really recommend that you move away from the area where you spawned so that the hunter or the knight that is searching for you cannot find you fast enough, delaying them from even finding you in the first place. Also, an item that you should really try to get straight away at the beginning of a match is the perfume. This item is incredibly powerful early game and can't really be used in late game since you'll most probably only be on one hit away from being knocked down. So make sure you buy the perfume early game so that you can really use it and get extra hit, extra health. But if you are the king and you're playing perfumer, then it would not be a good idea to buy perfume straight away. It would probably be recommended that you buy Dovelin. Dovelin is the little bottle that will heal you so that as soon as you get hit and as soon as you know that you're at a safe enough distance from the hunter, you can use the Dovelin. If you're a squire in the beginning of the match, one thing that you should really start doing is either decoding so that you can get those points for your king that I mentioned before, open the chest for your king as I also mentioned before, or Collect as many point coins as possible so that you can get that flare gun extra early or any other item that you might be able to pass to your king. One thing that you should really try to avoid is to try and avoid getting hit by the enemy knight. The enemy knight may try and focus any squire that they find at the beginning of the match since they, they need more coins. By letting them hit you, you're first of all giving them coins so they can buy the item to find your king, and you're also giving them presents that unlocks more abilities. The longer they spend without any extra powerful abilities, for example, faster regeneration of statues for Sculptor, the more chance your king has of surviving longer in the match, and the higher chance that your knight will get the enemy king first. So if you see the enemy knight coming your way and you're a squire, kite as much as you can. Moving into the mid game now. The hunter has most probably already found their target and they are now chasing the king. There's one thing that you can do to prevent that knight from chairing you and that is to abuse parts of the map. Now there are only three maps currently in turret and I'm sure they, might, they will add other ones in the future. And there are definitely some very popular places for you to abuse when you play Tarot. If you're in Sacred Heart Hospital, then you should definitely try and abuse the hospital itself. This place is perfect for Tarot because it means that the hunter is constantly chasing you in and outside of the building, up and down the stairs, and all of your squires can abuse their stun abilities or just body block around corners and, or body blocking stairs, meaning that the knight will suffer very much as they try and work out where you're going. Also, the fact that you have items that can help you transition from inside of the hospital to outside and then back in again without taking a hit 
maybe with the football or with the pocket watch. This will give you lots of time and waste a lot of the time of the night from the enemy team. In Arms Factory, as I mentioned in one of my previous videos, uh, the factory itself is one of the strongest places for you to kite and can really, really, really waste a lot of time, especially by that window and that door because survivors can also block the window by vaulting over and over and over whenever the hunter gets near meaning that they can never catch up to their target. Red Church has a lot of strong kiting areas and one of the ones that my discord has really asked me to mention in this video is the bully loop. I will show it right now in the video. You need to break these two walls and then you can loop this area, especially if you have squires. This can be a real pain for hunters to deal with. Do your best as a survivor to get there before the enemy knight does. Now, if you are a squire, then there is a certain strategy that you can employ to help your king kite for longer. Items are finite in Tarot, except for the raven. Meaning that once you buy that item yourself once, that item is now gone from your shop and now you can't buy it again. For example, you can only buy one flare gun per person in the match, etc. Most of the items that you'll find in the shop won't be very useful for you as a squire. For example, you don't need a football to help you kite a long distance away from the knight because the knight's really never chasing you. So what you can do is you can give those items that you buy from the shop to your king. How do you do this, you ask? By dropping the item from the shop. When you buy an item and then buy another item from the shop and you're already full and you have no more space to carry something, that item will fall to the ground. Now you can pick up that item and it will swap it for the item that you're holding. This also means that the king can pick up the item that you dropped on the floor or another squire for example. This can give the king two extra footballs because there are two squires, two extra pocket watches and the king can even give their flare gun to one of the squires. Beware though, because if you drop an item, an enemy team member can also pick it up. So make sure that your team is nearby when you drop it so that they can pick it up before the enemy team even sees you doing it. Another tip that I can give squires is to not drop the pallets unless absolutely necessary. The king will really need the pallets so that they can loop in this game mode since this game mode is very dependent on looping certain areas as long as possible. By dropping those pallets sooner than the king wanted, they have less time they can spend in that area and they also have less protection themselves. So usually just let the king decide when to drop pallets and you body block instead. Your king is about to get chaired. They're in the knight's balloons. What do you do? This should be the time you use that flare gun that you've been saving up, I'm sure. I really recommend that you don't waste your flare guns while you're trying to kite or trying to protect your king when they're kiting. Use it when they are in the balloons or when rescuing so that you can stop that hunter from chairing or give you a higher chance at rescuing. Now, most hunters will take excitement for this game mode, so you do need to be aware of that. And you might need to bait out their excitement by using a shorter stun from one of the stun characters and then using the flare gun once the excitement has run out. Now imagine that your king has actually got chaired that you didn't manage to use that flare gun. What should you do now? The pressure is on and a lot of the squires really feel this pressure, but don't rush that rescue. Do your best to rescue as late as possible before half to give your team more time. Like normal quick match mode and normal rank match mode, Identity 5 is really a time-based game. The more time you can give your knight to catch the enemy king, the higher chance you have of winning the match overall. Also, one mistake that I see constantly in this game mode is squires going to rescue with half health. Use this time while your king is on chair to heal yourself up to full so you can rescue with without being knocked down instantly. Now let's imagine the exit gates are about to open. Those eight minutes have gone by really quickly as you're kiting around a certain area. What should you do if you're the knight? If you're the knight and you knock down the king and you know the gates are nearly ready to be opened, then don't pick them up and chair them immediately. If you pick them up and chair them immediately, you're giving the chance to the squires to rescue and then have that protection bubble and so that they can book it to the exit gate without even taking a hit because they are now protected for one hit. So what you should do is spend as much time as possible whilst they're knocked down, chipping away at the squire's health or just delaying them in general so that you can chair them once the exit gate has been opened or as close as possible to that. Now it's time for the bonus tips. If you stuck around until the end of the video, you've probably been wondering, why do you want to drop the perfumes if you're playing Perfumer in Tarot? There's a nice trick that Mirgrad, one of the people from my Discord told me, that sounds a bit broken. If you play Perfumer 
as a squire, you technically have three perfumes. You can drop those three perfumes and then give them to the king. That means that they will now have three perfumes. Another great tip is to start using the pre-order function. Even if you don't have the right quantity of coins at the moment that you're looking through the shop, you can pre-order something and as soon as you have the certain amount of coins, you will get that item instantly. This would be a good idea to use and to start pre-ordering when you're in a quiet part of the match, when the hunter is maybe trying to find you. You can pre-order an item that you think will be necessary in the next few minutes of the match, meaning that you don't need to navigate the shop whilst you're kiting the knight. This can be a real pain. I want to give a special thanks to all the moderators on my Discord who gave me a great list of tips as I worked with them on this video. If there are any other tips that you know for Tarot that I missed, please write them down in the comments below. And if you found this video useful, please give this video a like. Subscribe if you want to find out some more tips, some tricks, and maybe some secret information that you might not have known about Identity 5. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.